in the, in the summer I was really being like a huge like man child, you know, or like just a just a stupid kid and who's like who's raising his voice back at his mom and just being this annoying little brat, you know. But yeah, the the one time we actually had like a really serious fight, I was just like, all right, like I'm fucking retarded. I need to stop this. They are young. They earn a lot of money. And they are famous all around the globe for playing a game. This is the official podcast of a professional esports team. These are the esports rock stars. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second episode of Esports Rock Stars. My name is Fred, I'm your host, and I'm sitting here in the podcast studio at the Rocket headquarter in Hamburg, Germany, and with me is Tien. Hi. Hello. You know Tien as the... I just want to do a short in, uh, introduction about you. You know uh, Tien as the, the Rocket Reddit guy. He is like the social media grandmaster of Rocket. Um, he is playing in a, in, the, in a very high German football league. Is that right? Mm, yeah, I, I just switched to second league, but yeah. And and right. he he is the he is the best League of Legends player that we have here at Rocket Studios. He, you you also we we heard it in the last episode. Um, you were playing as a substitute player for Team Rocket at the L, uh, U LCS. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was in around 2000. 15. So, so you 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 yourself tasted a bit of esports rock star fame. Nah, it was it was just on paper. So I, uh, <laughs> there was yeah. no way they're gonna sub me. In. Nice. Uh, we are recording the whole podcast. So Tian, me, and also our guests with um, the Rocket Can Pro headset. So you can hear the quality that we have right now. It's uh, it's just. A gaming headset, a Rocket gaming headset with an awesome uh, mic quality. And we are sitting here in Hamburg and we are establishing now a connection to the Rocket Gaming House in Berlin, where our today's star guest is already waiting. It's time to introduce our esports rock star out of the beautiful country named Estonia, Team Rocket's Eddie Carey. Please welcome Martin Kordma. You might also know him as HiQ. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, thanks for inviting me um, for the podcast. And um, yeah, I think we're going to have a great time. Is, is this your first podcast or you already did one before? Uh, yeah, I think it's my first podcast. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it's my first one. Did, did I pronounce your, your, your name right? Martin Kordma? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the German way of pronouncing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How would you pronounce it? I mean, in my modern language, I guess I say um, Martin Kordma. Martin Kordma. Yeah, you basically like, oh. have to like pronounce the armor, but uh, yeah, I mean it's pretty close, so it's uh, it's fine. Nice. Okay, we wanted to start the interview with you like uh, like we did the last time with ten quick questions. Okay, I want you to answer these questions as quick and as fast as possible. Are you ready? Okay, go ahead. What's your favorite food and drink? Uh, mac and cheese and Cola Zero. Mac and cheese? Do you have mac and cheese in Estonia? Isn't that uh, like American <laughs> food? I mean, uh, <laughs> I think it's an American food, but uh, I mean, my mom makes uh, basically uh, macaroni in this, but uh, some cheese on top of it and I'm good to go, you know, so yeah. Can you do it as well? Uh, I mean, I haven't tried it, but I'm, if I try it, I'm sure I can do it. Uh, seems pretty uh, straightforward, to be honest. Man, it's damn mac and cheese. You just put some cheese and some some greasy fat in a in a in a bowl, and and uh, here yeah. you are. It's so American. <laughs> yeah, it's a traditional Estonian food. Everyone knows it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> traditional Estonian mac and cheese. Um, Hikyu, what's your favorite League of Legends champion? Uh, Jinx. Coming back into meta, huh? Yeah, so, I think <clears throat> I don't know. I used to play her a lot, and like, and I just like her kit, and like, you can like really pop off with her, like if you get your passive. Um, so I don't know. I just I used to play her a lot, like a lot, a lot when she was meta. But uh, right now, she's like okay, I guess in some situations you pick it, but uh, yeah. I I heard the traps are dangerous. Yeah, especially from a mentor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> What do you love the most about being a professional esports player? Uh, the competitiveness. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like I've always been like really competitive. Even before the league, I used to play football for like nine years, and I think competitive, like playing competitive, is my passion. Like in in kind of like in everything in life, you know, whether it be at like school or or um, as like league or football. I've always been really competitive, and I always wanted to be better than everyone else. So yeah, definitely the uh, competitiveness. What do you really hate about being an esports pro? To like the I, I don't know how to explain it, but basically just like so much time you have to like constantly work hard. Um, especially since league pros like they work a lot more um, at their craft than like I know like um, people who like play f uh, sports etc. So like. I'm not, it's not like I complain about it. I like kind of mind working like really hard for like every single day for a long period of time. But I think especially last year I did it like two splits in a row, and I was like at the end I was like super like stressed out, and um, I just feel like I was like kind of burned out. But I mean that's not mm. the case anymore nowadays. But yeah, I just if I had to like bring up something, then I think it just the. I don't know just like the kind of like work you the work amount you have to really put in to actually like stay competitive and be at the top. I'm not complaining. It's just about um, about the sports, but yeah, I mean it's. Uh, I don't think a lot of people could handle it to be honest. Whoa, well, there was quite a quite an answer for a short question. <laughs> yeah. uh, we 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 will talk about some of the things you just said later. Um, let's just uh, go on with the quick questions. Okay. You can morph into one League of Legends champion in real life. Which one do you choose and why? Uh, Yasuo. Yasuo. Um, I why? Think, I don't know. I just feel like uh, being a samurai would be pretty nice, you know, and he uh, looks pretty. Um, he looks pretty fit, you know. So um, I would probably get all the girls as well. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you're preparing for a match. Do yeah. you have any rituals? Okay, so basically I wake up, I go shower, then I go play a few solo key games. Then I rewatch the opponent's game that like we were gonna play against. I watch like their LCS games a bit to see what they do. And then I go take a big poop and, uh, and then I'm good <laughs> to go, you know. And that's my every single SSD ritual. That's what I do every single SSD. Okay. The toilet must be busy on game day, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you don't even want to know, dude. It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> and if if you if you can't make a poo, then you then you feel bad, then you yeah. lose. Yeah, I just feel like something is wrong with me, so I really need to take that <laughs> uh, that poop. What's your favorite game of all time? Uh, like a video game, or yeah, video like game. A video game. Um, League of Legends. <laughs> Do you have any favorite games uh, besides League of Legends? Uh, Or are you so focused on it that you don't know uh, something else? I mean, I used to play, like, I, see, I, I played video games for like whole my life, but ever since, yeah. Le ever since I started playing League, I haven't really played anything else. I don't know, I okay. just, I've kind of lost like the fun for all the games. I just like being competitive, so I've just been playing League for like the past uh, six years or five years. What's your favorite music? Uh, genre, I think probably. Yeah, genre. Yeah. Probably like rap, I guess. Could just straight up rap. Yeah. Imagine you are stranded on a lonely island. Yeah. What are your three personal items you want to take with you? Hmm. Personal items. Yikes! This is a tough one. <laughs> uh, probably um, the first thing that comes to your mind. Don't think too uh, too long about it. Okay, uh, a phone, uh, a pillow, and um, and uh, <laughs> yikes! Yeah, and the bed. I guess. I mean, it's not really that personal, but a bed. Yeah, I don't know. That, I mean, that's that's the first three things that came up to my mind, so I had to say it. 
Okay. Why, why don't you all think about like surviving? No, but I mean, uh, it's it's a pressure situation, so I, I didn't really have time to think. So I just say there are three random things to come off the head, and that's all. Oh, yeah. in, in our first episode, Memento said uh, like phone and uh, charging peg. So you don't no, want no. He so wanted a phone, headphones, phone, headphones, right? Yeah. Okay, and something else. No, no one wants to take a knife or something to to make fire with it. Yeah. No, you want to sleep and hear yeah. listen to music. A lighter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's a stranded island. You just like chill, you know. It's a holiday. Oh, nice. God. Okay. And the last question: Which key is best for flash, D or F? F. What? I mean, it makes sense, no? F for flash. Like, it's really simple no. and straightforward. <laughs> you know what agree? D for dash. Nah, but... Ah. Yes. Okay, EQ, let's uh, go a bit deeper. Let's, um, yeah, let's talk about some very personal and, biogra and biography stuff. How did you start your career? How did you become a professional <clears throat> League of Legends player? What's, what's your story? Okay, so if I start from the very beginning, um, I think it was when I went into eighth grade. Um, then basically, like the the first day, I talked to my schoolmates and we were like, oh, like we should uh, find a game to play together, you know. So basically, what we all came up with was like League of Legends, and ever since, like we started playing League of Legends, like every single day, playing normal games, having a lot of fun, you know. Um, but once I got to like level 30, I, I just started playing instant solo queue. Like I was like really, I was like really interested um, like in the competitiveness or like the fact that you're gonna climb a ladder and like, like be noticed and like, just like, I don't know, just like get the highest rank you can get, you know? So meanwhile, all my friends like kept playing normal games. I just started to climb the ladder alone. And um, yeah, I would say I climbed the ladder pretty fast actually. Uh, I think I started like season, season three preseason or season two preseason, and mm -hmm. uh, I started at like silver or something, I think. But I remember like maybe was it uh, when I was in ninth grade at uh, the summer holidays. Um, I went from like at the start of the summer I was like gold three or something, and then by the end of the summer I was diamond one. And back then there was like no master tier, so getting like from gold three to diamond one in three months was like pretty, was like a pretty insane experience to me. But uh, I mean, the summer holidays wasn't really a summer for me because I just like played 15 hours per day, every day. Uh, I was- I 15, was, 15 hours. Yes, I was playing insane wow. amounts of solo. I was just like, I wake up, I play and I go to sleep and my mom was getting really mad at me because I stayed up so late every single day. and. And then my mom would like go to work in the morning, like she would hear me still being awake, you know, and she would like sometimes like come upstairs <laughs> and like yell at me and like we would have like all these like like little fights, you know. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, I just like really, really, really enjoyed playing the game. Mm. Like I had so much fun, like it was, it was like really fun for me. Um, and then, yeah, since I got to Diamond 1, I started like playing against all these like pro players, I guess. Uh, I started watching like competitive league. I remember watching actually like season two world championship. I think um, um, back then I was still like a new player, but um, yeah, I remember watching that and it was a really fun experience for me. And then yeah, season three, I saw like Faker styling on everyone, and I was like, holy man, like, I really want to play at that level, you know. Uh, so I just kept spamming league like every single day for like insane amounts of like time and like so for such a long like time period. And um, yeah, eventually I got the challenger. Um, like basically, if you're high on the ladder, like people notice you and I invite you to like amateur teams to uh, play some go for lols. Like back then, go for lols were like the, the thing, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I started playing like go for lols and amateur tournaments with some uh, other like amateur players. Um, mm -hmm. I would say anyone we know nowadays. Uh, <laughs> I think no. I think there's no one who like still kind of plays the game competitively. Yeah, I think there's no okay. one. Okay. Um, but yeah, basically, um, so I got uh, I got an offer to like um, like a team that wants to play in the Challenge Series qualifiers. Um, so yeah, that was like my my first like kind of serious team that actually had a goal um, other than just playing like random tournaments right so mm. yeah 
I can't remember exactly what roster we had, but you know, I mean, it was a pretty long time ago. But yeah, I started playing like seven series qualifiers. Fun fact, I actually played him three times and I failed every single time. But I came close every single time. Um, yeah, especially the, sec the second second series qualifier for me. I actually played Memento in a team and um, we were called as low priority back then. And I remember um, basically there were two groups of five and we had uh, in our group we had like the nowadays called like misfits you know uh, they were like Alfari mm. and uh, back then they had a different roster like Selfie and uh, I think it was Wisdom, Yuki and Dreams but yeah basically we went 3-0 uh, in the first three games and I was like all right like this is finally when we make it you know we get into chance series I've been waiting for this so long and mm. uh, and then the last two games, we really choke hard, and we basically lose our spot for the for the qualifier game, and uh, that was extremely sad for me. Um, yeah, that was what team was that? Was it Nerf? Or? No, no, it was low priority. And uh, like oh, low priority. after we failed that, Memento went into Nerf, and then he joined Rocket afterwards. So, but yeah, after after I failed my second Chancellor's qualifier, I was like just chilling in the summer, and then uh, Hachi, like one of my a former coaches asked me if I want to play in a Turkish team, like the second league, and basically the goal for that team would be to promote into uh, the first uh, Turkish league, TCL. And mm. I was like, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't have much to do, so I was like, yeah, like, fuck it, you know, I uh, might as well play and do, like, still play, like, at least at some competitive level. Um, so yeah, I played in that. Uh, it was actually pretty fun. Uh, we actually qualified for the TCL. And that team is now known as Fenerbah. So, mm. yeah, that was, uh, that was a pretty fun experience for me. I got some uh, overall experience and I think I improved a lot from that. And then after that, I was just like playing solo queue again. And then I was like pretty high up on the ladder. I, was, I think it was like rank 20 or something or rank 25. And then a German team invited me and um, Iguana Esports back then. And, uh, mm. Like basically they needed a top laner and Eddie Carey and I had a, like a good friend of mine who I played in a previous teams with Kex and I told them if they get me and Kex we will win the the ESL Meisterschaft 100% and that's basically what exactly happened you know they got mm -hmm. both of us and we won we won the German League um, like pretty convincing I would say. Um, mm. But yeah, basically the first place of the the German League winner, like he gets to also play in Chelsea's qualifier. But uh, after the after the German League, I my mentor like poked me, you know, like, hey, do you want to try out for Giants? And I was like pretty, I was like pretty taken aback, you know. I was like really surprised, and I was like, I don't know, it was just kind of like a shock, you know, like finally my chance to like get into SS. Uh, I just remember like the, the tryouts I had, you know, it was like so nerve wracking. I, <laughs> I was like literally shaking in uh, at home playing the scrims against like all these like top mm. SS teams. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it's basically like a job interview, you know, for like a high prestige job, you know, or, like company is just like, you need to do kind of everything right to get in. And I don't feel like at that time, I don't feel like I did everything right, but I, at least there's some, some potential in me and yeah, Memento knew me from previous teams, so I guess I had uh, mm. a little advantage over the other tryouts. Um, mm. But yeah, the, then I got in Giants, but the first weeks, like when I went into Berlin, I still had to play the Chance Series qualifier with my, with my German team, you know, because I wanted to help them out and I wanted to uh, help them qualify the Giants Series. But yeah, basically mm. then I had some internet problems in Giants Gaming House and I couldn't really perform to the level I wanted to in the Chance Series qualifiers. And then yeah, we lost those again, but uh, at that point I was in you know, SSR, so I didn't feel too sad about me. Uh, for me, I just felt sad about my uh, German teammates. But yeah, then I got into Giants, and um, yeah, that was like a hell of a split, I guess. My first, uh, yeah. my first split in uh, in SS. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just like I just it's kind of hard to like um, describe what I really experienced, like. Even though we were losing every week, um, yeah. Like, even though I was, we, we can talk about that later. Okay. I feel yeah. like we yeah. can talk so okay, much sorry, now. Sorry. I, we have some few questions. Very interesting. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, Chen, you have some questions. Yeah. So uh, going back to your ranking, uh, like spamming solo queue days. Um, 
what what position did you play and what kind of champions did you play? Was it always ADC or something else? Uh, I think once, like when I got to high elo diamond one, that's when when I was like playing uh, basically one or two champions at every role. I was like playing like Nidili, Nidili and Zed for mid lane, or like Nidili for jungle and Zed Oriana for mid lane, then Vayne for AD, Lissim for jungle, Vladimir for top lane, and Thresh for support or something. I was like playing pretty much all roles. Uh, but then season four, I started remaining AD specifically because I knew I wanted to, I wanted to like play competitively. So I knew I needed to choose one role. So yeah. So how come ADC? Uh, like when I played all roles, I felt like I had the most success at ADC, and uh, just the ADC role was really fun for me. Uh, back then, I played Vayne a lot, so I feel like I, I could always uh, be under the spotlight. You know, when I when I play Vayne on AD carry, and yeah, I just felt like. The AD carry role in general is like you get a lot of attention, I guess, and yeah, that, mm. a lot of praise. So yeah, I like the role. Mm. So did you have like a favorite uh, pro player back in the days you were watching? I uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I watched um, since season three worlds. I watched um, what's his name, Piglet, and I watched Double Lift. Uh, I was I remember back at that time I watched Yellow Pete. Um, Yellow Pete, he's from Hamburg actually. Oh, he, yeah, he studied that, here. Yeah, I remember watching that guy. Um, yeah, but I think that's pretty much it to be honest. I just remember watching like Double is really closely all the time because he was like getting so much praise and attention. And yeah, I think he was a, uh, I mean, still he's a great player. So, yeah. How was Turkey? Like uh, last time we had uh, Memento here and he was in Russia and he. And he's he talking told, about yeah, he, those crazy. He told us that they uh, they treated them like real real superstars in Russia. And what what about Turkey? How did you feel in Turkey? Yeah, what's what what kind of experiences uh, kind of uh, remind the, you of that time? Okay, so the the Chinese, um the Turkish Chancellor's team I played in was a super massive second team. You know, it was like the same organization, super massive. So they actually took like really good care of us. We. We went to Turkey for like two weeks or like one and a half weeks, uh, staying at the Supermassive Gaming House. It was like super nice. It was um, uh, unlimited amounts of Red Bull, and that's what I drank all day, every day there. <laughs> uh, Sounds healthy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But um, yeah, the, the weather was super nice, obviously. Um, but I mean, we didn't really go outside that much, but we had like a huge balcony on the on the rooftop and that was really nice. Um, I remember having like so many, so many like deep discussions with my mental coach at that team, like on the balcony late nights. So I don't know, Turkey overall was like really, it was a great experience for me. Mm. We we got some 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 little interruptions now. I'm not sure if the listener can hear that. I'm not sure if it's on the recording. I don't think so. But, right? uh, it, it, it shouldn't be on the recording, but if you hear something, um, we are talking to you via a voice over IP connection, so we're talking via internet. Uh, Tian, you got another question? Yeah, uh, so the Giants trial, was that the upset situation where he like left shortly? Uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was okay. the trial where upset and we left there. So it was like uh, like really a short period of time where everything happened, right? Like Yeah, it was really fast. You getting noticed. Yeah, yeah, it was really oh, fast. What time period are we talking about? Um, 10 days, I think. Like ten days, then they, yeah. Then they from notice out. to scrims, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. It was really fast, actually. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember. And, uh, I remember like telling my mom, you know, like okay, like I, I got into SS, you know. She's like, um, all right. Like I've always told her about SS, and that's that's always been my goal, you know. So, like before it actually happened, she couldn't like really realize what will happen when I get into SS. Um, the fact that I had to like leaves like um 12 like i was in 12th class basically the last class of high school i was at the middle of it and yeah, i was like mom like i want to go to berlin i want to play competitively you know mm -hmm. and she was like i don't know like i, I know like she let me do it but i, I could see her in his uh, in her eyes you know that like she wasn't really 100 percent agreeing on this idea or she didn't really mm -hmm. want me to risk it like this badly you know um but yeah like she she still supports me like she she watches every game she even rewatches some games uh mm. there's actually a funny story about this um i was at home you know and then i was like 
when uh, there was like some router issues so i didn't really have like wi-fi or internet or something and then the the router is in my mom's bedroom right and then i remember like it was like 11 30 like p.m like um like evening you know and then i just go into my mom's room and i see my mom watch like re-watching my my games in nrp versus <laughs> Fnatic, you know where i like completely mm-hmm. pop off you know so it was uh yeah i was like mom what are you doing it's like yeah i'm just watching games they were so fun you know so yeah, my my mom is like a huge supporter of me for sure. Uh, nowadays she, yeah, she basically gives like uh, all the hundred percent to support me. So I'm really happy for that. Yeah, but, but because you were we you were already talking about that that one summer you played 15 hours a day, so you practically did nothing but eat, sleep, and play league. And yeah. I think this could cause real problems at home with your family. Yeah, I mean it definitely. Yeah. Like especially that summer, I remember having like so many fights with my mom. Um, yeah. Like I had to do some uh, house chores and like help out in the garden, uh, but I was like always like really lazy. The only thing that was on my mind was like leaked twenty four seven. So yeah, I remember having a lot of like these mini like um, traumas, you know, with my mom. And like one time it like got kind of serious. So like like some. Um, Uh, I'm almost not gonna go into detail, you know, because like, it's pretty personal mm-hmm. stuff. But yeah, one time it got pretty serious, and after that cooled down, I've um, uh, I kind of realized, you know, like that she's my mother, and I kind of matured up after that after that summer. And ever since, I've, I've never like really like raised my voice towards my mom or, or really fought back, but. Like uh, in in that summer, I was really being like a huge like man child, you know, or like just a just a stupid kid, and who's like who's raising his yeah. voice back at his mom and just being this mm-hmm. annoying little brat, you know. But yeah, yeah, the the one time we actually had like a really serious fight, I was just like, all right, like I'm fucking retarded, I need to stop this. And yeah, basically ever since uh, I learned my lesson, and yeah, I've never done it again. Yeah, uh, what's your family situation like? Do you have siblings or? Uh Uh, yeah, I have um, I have uh, like half brother from my mom's side and two half sisters mm-hmm. from my father's side. Uh, I don't tr- I haven't talked to my sisters for a guy a bit. We weren't really that close, but my brother is like a huge supporter of me, and like he's the he's the one like who is kind of always been pushing me to play competitively. And yeah, my brother is like. Um, He's, a, he's older than me as well, so basically if my mom is like has some questions about me or like what I'm doing, then my mom goes to my brother and my brother answers the questions. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think my mom and brother watch all the games together actually at home, but um, even though they, like my brother lives alone. Um, mm. But yeah, that's all for the family situation. <laughs> so, so does your mom understand uh, League of Legends now? Or yeah, she even like uh, she sometimes asks like, why did you pick this champion? Like names her, you know, or like <laughs> names the champion. I'm like, I'm like, mom, even if I explain it, I think you wouldn't really understand, you know. And then she's like, just just give it a try, just give it a try. I'm like, all right. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, she like my brother has explained League a lot to her, and she, I would say, she understands the basics. I think if she would play League of Legends, she, she would probably be bronze five. But um, mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean that's. You're living now in the in the Rocket Gaming House in Berlin with the other uh, members of Team Rocket. Did she uh, already visit you in Berlin? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, she she's not gonna visit this bit. She did last year though. Uh, both bits, okay. but okay. not this bit. So how did how did it make you feel like seeing your mom in the crowd uh, and playing? Uh, she she like didn't really visit um, like on that uh, day. She visited like when in spring and summer there were like this uh, both speeds at these four days that were like off uh, like basically mm-hmm. like for every team. So that's the time period she visited in. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I, I mean it's always so it's really nice, yeah. Because uh, I mean obviously I think everybody gets kind of like I wouldn't say like homesick, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you can say a little bit homesick and just seeing my sure. my mom from like back home. Yeah, it was definitely like, especially during those stressful times, it was uh, a nice, like a definitely nice thing. Mm. Mm. 
Hiki, your, your home country, Estonia, which is in fact an, an awesome, a very beautiful country, a fast growing economy now, and it's known for its very strong IT sector, but yeah. it also went through some um, economically very bad and poor years, through some really, I have to say, shitty years, especially in the 90s, after it regained independence from the Soviet Union. Did you ever experience problems or disadvantages mm. because of your origin? Uh, I wouldn't really say so. Like, okay. um, yeah, that's the simple answer is no, I guess. Are you, are you from a, from a, from a little vill village or are you from a city or where are you from? Yeah, I live in the second biggest city in uh, Estonia, which is called uh, okay. Tartu. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, growing up there and everything, like my mom was like really like she was working her ass off just to like give me everything that uh, I need, you know? So yeah, I don't know. I think my mom took a really good care of um, giving me giving me all that I need to grow up uh, properly. And yeah, I don't feel like I've ever been lacking anything uh, or like, a, I've never feel like I'm like something is like limited for me, you know, that I can't, um, mm -hmm. I can't like uh, get this or this or this, so yeah. So you also talked about a uh, little bit, I, I know from like personal talks that you used to play football on a pretty high level. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm. uh, yeah, I used to play like back then. I think that like the age period when I played football was um, from seven years old to I would say 16 or maybe. Yeah, I think it was 16. Um, yeah, I always played football at a pretty high level. I went to a lot of like um, tournaments like across Europe and um, yeah, there was like even like one time I went to um, the, the tryouts for the Estonians um, national team. Uh, mm, I mean, really? I, it obviously it was like under under 16, so it was like an age limit, you know, but I, uh, still. yeah, but I mean, I guess <laughs> I wasn't like that good, so I couldn't get in, but yeah, I had really high hopes for uh, football and uh, my father actually was like really, he really wanted me to succeed as well in football and he would always like help me practice and he would tell me to do this, all this extra stuff, you know, to really work hard and, but back then, you know, um, like football was still uh, like kind of like the, the fun thing for me, so I didn't like really, really like try hard, you know, like there's like mm. putting more work in and like doing like, I don't know, like uh, push-ups and sit-ups and everything at home, you know, to like to put that extra work in because for me, I didn't like really think about the wish. I was just like, all right, tomorrow is practice. Uh, let's go have some fun, you know, that's what, that's what that's, that was my mindset. But at the same time, I was still like really competitive. Like I really, in practice, like try harding for me was really fun. But I didn't, outside mm. of practice, I didn't really put in extra work that much. Mm. And what, what position did you play in football? Uh, at the start, I played midfield and then like central mid and then uh, I played like central back and then I played central mid again. Oh, okay. So uh, would you say you, there was something you learned during that time that helped you now with your LCS career? Uh, yeah, like growing up uh, with football, uh, the coaches got like more and more uh, like uh, strict, I guess. So discipline, discipline is one of the things that I was uh, taught, you know, I don't think I have any problems with discipline anymore. And that's the, like, uh, I think that's like the, the football that has done this for me, you know, just a lot of discipline. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously football is a team game, so you have to learn how to play in a team. So I think that's also one of the bigger things. Um, and yeah, I think um, those are like the two most valuable, valuable lessons I've learned, I guess. So, so is Freddy a strict coach? Uh, I wouldn't really say so. I think he's pretty laid back, but... Um, the coach of Team Rocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I really like his like um, coaching. Like even though he's like laid back and everything, about he like there's like no bullshit, you know. Like he he really gives you the information you need. Like in the right. in the feedback, everything he he only gives you the impor important things you need to know, and that's what I really like. Mm. Even though in my previous teams, I feel like there was just a lot of useless stuff and I wasn't really learning that much from the coaching staff. But this time around, since Freddy has actually been playing before, I feel like he actually has like a lot of knowledge, you know, that I can improve and like um, I can learn from him, you know. So I'm 
I'm like really happy about our coaching uh, situation. Yeah. In our last episode, we were talking to Memento, Team Rocket's jungler. Uh, you played with him before, and um, I think you know each other quite well. Can you tell us a bit um, about your relationship to Memento, to the other team members? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah, it was so we, when I played the second Chancellor Scholar Fair, I played with Memento. Um, I guess the first time we saw each other was uh, at Lyon. I remember boot camping there for like two weeks or something. Uh, I had to skip school for two weeks, so <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> was it approved by the by the school? No. I mean, my mom is uh, okay. So you can't you can't let anyone know this, but my mom is like a doctor, so she can give me the papers, you know, to skip school. But my school. What? Oh, what? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Are okay. you serious, man? Okay, let's no, keep no, going. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, we <laughs> should this talk didn't about happen. this. We, we didn't talk about that. Okay, oh, this okay. didn't happen. Yeah, the weather the weather is nice today, guys. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> you had a huge headache back then. Okay, and then you met Memento? <laughs> yeah, of course. I met Memento randomly uh, on the streets of Lyon. And then I was like, hey, Memento, do you want to play Chinese? Of course, okay, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, in Lyon, me and Memento met up the first time. Back then, I was, I think it was 17 or 16, 17, I think. Yeah, probably 17. No, 16. Uh, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the first time I was, like, met Memento. Memento was always a few years younger as well. And um, yeah, he was like really fun, you know, and he was a great teammate. But back then I felt like I was like kind of immature still because I was pretty young. So sometimes uh, I would like um, get like unfocused in screams because of mistakes and I would like tilt, you know, which is like really unacceptable for me nowadays. But back then I would like sometimes do it and the memento would be the one like to call me out on it. and. Yeah, like stuff like this, but uh, yeah, I've always liked like Memento's personality and other things. I think he's always been a great teammate. Um, uh, like even Leon, like we, uh, I don't know, like he was the one like um, who like um, really, like I didn't like Dr. Pepper before, but like Memento like told me to like try it again, you know, and I don't know what what, what happened, you know, I like, I, I started liking Dr. Pepper just because I was drinking with Memento, you know. <laughs> And then like she, um, he also like made me drink coffee properly. And I don't know, he was like, he was like <laughs> teaching me these little things, you know? So yeah, I don't know. Um, so, yeah. So did he change a lot from back then to today? Uh, I think he's, <clears throat> hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. I think a couple of years still change, um, like everyone a little bit, you know, so. I, I think he's just like a bit more mature nowadays. Uh, back then he was still like, um, I, was, I think he's like 19 or or something, about to get 20 or something. So uh, yeah, I think he's changed a little bit, but uh, I think not that much. I think I've changed more than him uh, during this time period. So between the time between Lyon and Giants, yeah. how close were you, were you two? Because you said he kind of told you to like try out. Uh, I mean, after we failed the chances qualifier, we didn't really talk at all. Uh, just like really sometimes Memento would ask me like how I'm doing and I would explain like I'm just like playing solo queue and trying my best, you know, and uh, I mean sometimes mm -hmm. we would have these like deep conversations about uh, the goals we both have and like where we want to get at and and like how hard we're gonna work towards the goal, etc. So yeah, so, mm -hmm. sometimes we would have the, those like once in a month or so, um, but we didn't really talk that much, just like catch up like okay. once a month or so, yeah. But basically, you can say uh, without Memento, you maybe wouldn't have gone pro, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment to make. Mm. Um, let's move on to the other teammates. Uh, I mean, especially Noskarin, since he's yeah. your dual lane partner. Yeah. Um, how's your relationship with him? Or did you guys maybe know each other before? Uh, no, we didn't really know each other before. I mean, we played against each other, but that's pretty much all. Um, but the, I mean, I think those guys like really personality wise is like really fun and I think we mesh pretty well outside of the game. We have a lot of like uh, insane memes and dank memes and like insane banter, you know. Um, but uh, since like the, the, like we first uh, met each other in Korea and I think ever since like day one, we, there's no like, there's no ice to break, you know. It's just been like always like super mm. chill and like, um, yeah, I think it's really like easy to work with him and I think, um, like our 
or Duolane, like, um, I don't know, Synergy, I guess, is uh, it's going pretty well. And I think we're meshing pretty mm. well outside and in the game. No! This is the point where the interview stops. Sorry, guys. We had a problem with our online recording tool. It was not my fault, I swear. And we lost the last 15 minutes of the interview with HeQ. We were talking about some interesting topics like self-confidence, like the latest and the upcoming matches, the communication within the team. But you can't hear it this time because HeQ's audio track is lost. We know where the problem has been and we can fix it so that it will not happen again in the future. We will give you the rest of the interview with HQ in another episode. We will talk to him again. I promise you, we just continue this podcast episode with uh, Tian, me and the listeners feedback. Our uh, podcast is very new. This is the, the, the second episode. So we are not drowning in feedback yet. But we have some people that wrote us. You can, you can uh, send us your questions. Just drop a tweet with the hashtag esportsrockstars. And uh, user Dome1406 did that via Twitter. He said, very nice podcast. Guys, interesting to hear Memento's history. I'm hyped for the next episode would uh, wish me Norskaren as guests. Why didn't we fulfill his wish? Uh, yeah, because they are esports rock stars and we have to we have to fit with their timetable, but we we cannot give you our word, but I think maybe. we can maybe we can fulfill your wish in the next episode. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, maybe. And uh, user Kupko wrote on Reddit, hey there, I realized the podcast might not get a lot of traction as it's for a pretty niche audience, but I want to say I really enjoyed it, especially the insight on the in-game shot calling of Vitality game. This stuff is always fascinating. Well, thank you, Kupko. Um, yeah, if you... I'm, I'm not sure. Is he right with what he said about the, the niche audience? You tell me. You're the podcast addict. I think there are a lot of people out there who are interested in, in EU LCS, of course, because thousands yes. of people are watching it every week. But and I mean, it's more the format, you know, like not everyone likes yeah. podcasts and it's not that big of an audience for podcasts. Uh, podcasting is the future, okay. guys. So <laughs> we, we can have another podcast about this. Yeah. And, but and to be honest, in, in which other format you have the chance to listen so closely and to, to spend so much time with these, uh, with these guys, with these uh, pro players. Yes, that's true. But, and um, uh, yes, yeah, but would, it's still a pretty niche audience. Of course. So, dear listeners, tell your mother, tell your father, tell your friends, tell everyone about this awesome podcast. And um, yeah, you have the chance to be part of the show as well. Write us your uh, your your question to our esports rockstars, your feedback, and uh, please give us an iTunes uh, rating. We will read out all the iTunes ratings because they are pretty uh, important for our iTunes rating and we have a new one five stars from user Brotinger he, he writes very nice enjoyed the first episode with Memento very much looking forward to upcoming stuff nice yes. we are doing as well all right That's it. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, the Rocket Channel, questions and feedback, hashtag esports rockstars. Give us the iTunes rating. And um, yeah, we are looking forward to the next episode. Tian and Fred say goodbye. Bye bye.